Hi crafty friends, it's Annie from Vintage Lace Journal and I've got this wonderful kit that I'm going to do a junk journal with today and I bought this from um, Emily Designs from Etsy, her Etsy shop and this is called the Honey Bee Junk Journal Kit. Now I've been wanting to do a honey bee or a bee journal for a long long time um, and I saw this on Emily's page and was like wow this has got so many beautiful bee images in it's perfect for what I want it to do so I'm just going to really quickly just show you some of these um, images so these are the um, the background kind of pages that you're going to use or I'm going to use for my journal so I've got that one there and then this one has got the honeycomb and this be beautiful bee design images and that lovely text background then there's this one which is like a blues and blacks very vintagey looking again be on one side and a more plain page on the other so i printed that one out uh, twice then i've got this one which is a paler page and again got those beautiful backgrounds and lovely bee images and the oranges come back into play here with a lovely blue color combination just the blue and the on orange is yellow and then this one here which i've cut in half which i didn't mean to I will rectify that soon. And then along with this, there's these lovely little tags with the bee images on. And it says, be pretty sweet honey. And there's some kind of like vintage photos of um, honeycomb and little beehive. Then there's these beautiful tags and other pieces of ephemera. And then you've got these stunning bee images, which obviously you can cut out. And again, it's got that white edging around, which a lot of digitals have. So it makes it easy for you to cut round. Um, and these are going to make lovely... Um, focal points on some of those pages and I've got this lovely sunflower which I printed out nice and big again I'm going to use this as a kind of a door on one of my pages and then I've printed this out which I'm going to use as a tuck spot so I printed these quite big and again it's that lovely dark blues and golds of the bees then there's this lovely image of the flowers and the little bees around the honey pot I've printed these tags off. I think I've printed them off too big, but I'm going to use them, fold them over and use them as um, journaling spots inside the tag. Look at the colours on that. It's like a stained glass window. It's beautiful. Then I've got this lovely bee image. And again, I'm going to use that as a journaling card. Another one, that lovely text background. And then I've enlarged some of the tags that I'm going to use. And enlarged some of these other images. And then there's um, some small images which I made into, um, I shrunk them down in size so I could get like six on a page. And again, I can use these dotted about the journal and um, put them on the tags, those kind of things. Another one of those giant tags. And this is kind of like a stamp. You can't quite see the edge because it's white and cream. There's a stamp edging around there and on this one as well. So again, I'm going to use that to fold in half as like a um, pocket and some tags. Some more of the bees another big tag and another tag now the method i'm going to use to put all this together is slightly different today um i've done loads of journals when we've done the three style binding so i wanted to do something different so i've gone back to creating a concertina fold okay and um, what you do the way i've done mine is i've not made any outside covers at the moment because obviously i didn't know how long this is going to be or how long i needed this to be should i say what i'm going to do is i've i'm going to fold these in half so these measure five and a half across by seven and a half down okay so when i fold those in half that's their size now what you do with a concertina fold is i'll give you the measurements to this in a moment you what i did was have a piece of a4 black cardstock this is thin cardstock because you want it to be um obviously pliable for you to be able to do the concertina folds in a moment so i got my a4 paper first of all i trimmed it down to seven by five so it's the same size as these okay and i didn't cut it lengthways okay that's not what i did so what i did was i'm thinking i'm going to need an inch on the inside of my journal to cover to stick this down and an inch on the other side now when i do my um concertina folds i like this to be half an inch so this here is half an inch because i find that a really good width then to be able to put these over and stick them on okay and that makes your page on a constant page in between each one of those inches i do a quarter of an inch so it's half inch up half inch down 
so that's a half inch and then there's a quarter of an inch in between those it's a quarter of an inch or is it an eighth i'm getting my mud on yeah so half inch half inch and then a quarter of an inch okay so basically what you do is you put this into your scoreboard and like i said i will show you the measurements to this in a moment if i can find out where they put it so my first score i scored an inch which gave me this side here i then scored a quarter of an inch which is my first little part on my spine okay then i scored inch quarter of an inch inch quarter of an inch every half sorry every quarter of an inch to make an inch should i say it'll become apparent when we do it okay so then what you do is you make mountain and valley folds now your mountain folds will be the two half inches that pinch together and then your valley fold will come down and you'll have a flat bit bit which will be your um, little quarter of an inch which you eventually turn over and that's the bit you stick on your spine okay so put that on my scoreboard i've done all my scoring which as i've said i will put this online or you can screenshot that as it is once i got to my last measurement which was nine and six eighths it was then so my last one was an inch it was then i chopped that last piece off okay so the last little piece i had no score marks on chopped that off threw it away now what you then do is obviously you do all your mountain folds and valley folds so your uh, your quarter of an inches quarter of an inches half an inches i'll get this right in a minute your half an inches pinch up to make your mountain fold now it's on those folds that you stick together okay so i'm going to bring in some score tape and this is, if i remember rightly is quarter of an inch so this will go exactly on my score marks on here okay so starting with my inch at the left hand side i'm going to leave that inch there and then what you do is you put the tape on one side of this all the way to the bottom there we go and snip that's my scissors there they are. okay and i'm going to do all of my tape first so then i leave that's going to be my first one which will glue to that half an inch there leave my quarter of an inch go on to my next half inch and again put my tape down and what i will do when i do this is i tape and i glue okay so that gives that extra security and a little bit of wiggle room uh, once you put your sheets on okay so then i've got my half inch quarter of an inch going to my next half inch and you'll see a pattern occurring now it looks like a piano there we go okay so leave my next half inch because that will stick to that one then we've got a quarter of an inch then we go down to our next half inch Okay, I will come back and burnish all these on because they need to be stuck on really, really well. Otherwise, they just lift up. So leave my half inch, leave my quarter of inch, go on to my next half inch. Okay, leave that next half inch, quarter inch, go on to the next half inch. And this is our last one. Because if you remember, we had six pages, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know that's right. Okay. Then I'm going to get you in with a burnishing tool. Now I'm going to use, if I can find it, uh, a lollipop stick. Okay. And I'm just going to run along and really push that tape into the fibres of the card. I am using wet glue as well. But by pushing this down, you get a really good stick to your card really give that good old push just the flat side of a lollipop stick and that should also help with you when you come to lift your tape that remains to be seen because me and tape never get on okay so here comes our next bit i've got some tacky glue and i'm gonna peel all my bits off first all my um, backing off then one at a time we're going to stick these down as we go okay so
I'm actually going to do one at a time because I'm going to get myself in the muddle. So lift off your backing tape and then just put in a little bit of wet glue. Okay. And then fold that over. And again, give that a really good rub. Because this is a bit that you need to stick. You don't want your spine starting to fall apart. Okay. Then I can go on to my next one. Again, lift the tape, a little bit of glue over the top, and then fold that over. Give it a real good push down. Okay, next one. And just keep going along. So lift the tape, a little bit of wet glue. And again, stick those two together. I'm going to bring that up and over. And it's worthwhile taking a time on this bit because obviously this gives you the really nice spine. And what you should start to get is your you see that you get the kind of like little bits in between okay three more to go so lift a little bit of wet glue and then fold So I've seen this method done in a while actually, seeing a lot of people have gone on to kind of like sewing and binding their journals that way. Um, I haven't seen one of these done for a while. But because of the way the paper's folded, I thought this was a perfect thing to rather than cut A4 in half, is to actually leave them whole and put them together on one of these bindings. And last one. And lift that last one up. And again, give that a real good push. Okay, so what we should have now is our lots of little. Let's fold that in. Mountains and valleys. Let's straighten these all up. And there we have it. Okay, so each of our pages will go on one of these. Okay, and the flat back that we've got here, that's the part that you stick to the spine of your journal. Now, when all that's done, so we don't take into consideration these two bits. These two go on to the front cover. This inch here and this inch here go to the front cover. This then measures this right. Uh, that is two and a three quarter inches. So my spine, when I come through my spine, it needs to be two and three quarter inches. So let me just have a look at that. So if I take some black card and just cut that out, I'm just thinking now, okay. two and three quarters. This part should then stick on. I think I that wrong. Which, which bit have I measured wrong? It's two and a quarter, isn't it? No, it's not. It's one and three quarters. At least I couldn't cut it too small. Okay, so one and three quarters will be my spine. That will then fit on there. And then these little sections, which is your little quarter inch, will then lift and this bit will stick on your pages. Okay. And there we go. So that all sticks on like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is think about my front and my back cover. So I've got my spine there. 
Okay, I won't be using this. Obviously, that's just a measurement because that's way too floppy for a spine. Next thing I'm going to do is think about making my actual outside cover for my journal. Okay, so I am going to use black card um, because I'm going to use some of these. I'm going to cut around this and stick on the card and obviously embellish it. Um, so I'm just going to go get some black card. So I've got A4. 300 GSM cardstock. This is a nice heavyweight cardstock. Now, because my pages are going to be um, seven and a half high, I'm going to I've cut this already at seven and three quarters. Just give me that self that little quarter of an inch at the top. Now, I'm going to make this because obviously this isn't going to be big enough for one sheet. This is why I've got two. I'm going to make this. Um, I'll explain what I'm going to do as as I score it. Okay, so I'm going to pop it on my scoreboard. Now I'm going to score it at five and three quarters because again, these measure five and a half and I want that quarter of an inch extra just to give me that little bit of playroom on the spine. OK, so first sheet I'm going to score at five and three quarters. Let's get my thin tool. So five and three quarters. So that's my front cover. OK, and then I'm going to factor in my spine into this, which we said was going to be one and three quarters. Just double check that again. So, yep, one and three quarters. So, um, so that's five. So one inch. So that's five and three quarters. So that's six and three quarters is one inch. Having a brain maths moment here. So one and three quarters of that take that to seven and a half. Okay. So this part I'm going to cut out. So this section I'm going to cut, but I'm going to do exactly the same scores on my next piece of paper. Okay. So bring my next piece of card in, and I'm going to measure that at uh, five and three quarters. And then we said that was seven and a half. OK, so what will happen is this will be the back cover. This will be the front cover and I'm going to glue together the spines. OK, so that will create a back and front cover and that will also strengthen the spine. So on each section, I'm going to cut off this piece here. So don't need that. So just to the right of that score line, actually just down the middle of that score line if you can. So I'm going to cut that one off there and cut that one off there. OK, so if we now fold this along that score line, we're going to do it the opposite way. You should always do opposite way to this way you've scored. OK, those will now stick together and we've created our book. OK, and then into that, my spine should fit in there. OK, now when I measured this, I measured it, as you can see, quarter of an inch less. The reason for that is you don't want your spine sticking out the top of the book. So you'll just have an eighth of an inch at either end. OK, so let's stick these two together. So again, I'm going to run some... Uh, tacky glue down here. What I might actually do first of all is tape this and then just go over with the tacky glue as well just to give it that extra layer of glue. Oops. We've had um it's an apiary as they're called um, open up in our town near us and they've been making local honey it is absolutely gorgeous um yeah Gawson apiary they sell it in the local they say if you have um any allergies if you get hay fever that you should eat your local honey because apparently it helps you because of the pollen they collect um yeah so apparently if you if you suffer with Allergies, try getting hold of some local honey that's made in your area because it's supposed to help with them. Um, 
all analogies very clever okay so again I'm just going to really burnish those down give that a good stick lift those off <laughs> and then wet glue So I'm really concentrating on edges. Just be careful with black card. Um, I always find this. I don't know if you've got a way to get it off. If you get glue on black card, it's a bugger to get off. So it does sh shine through sometimes. So while I'm putting glue on top of here, just be very careful when you stick it together. Okay, so coming in with that part here. And again, give that a real good push down. Back and front. And there we go. We have our outside, our bead journal. Our inside is now done. So the last thing I'm going to do is to stick this on. So again, I'm going to put some tape down, first of all. Um, so again, remember, don't go all the way up to the top because it doesn't go all the way up to the top. So you probably want to go just to about there. And I'm not going all the way to the edge either, just in case it does show a little bit. It's just that extra level of stick, really. So just roughly leave about half an inch at the bottom and the top and then a little bit each side because the wet glue I'll put onto the back of the actual concertina part. Just makes lifting tape so much easier once you do that and you give it a real good rub down because it sticks right into the fibers okay so that's glued on here happy with that the wet glue i'm going to put onto the back of here now these should if you've um, measured and done these correctly they should lay flat it's not always the case but once it's in your book it should be okay Lovely sound. There we go. So wet glue on this part, sticky tape on the other part, and obviously a lump. That should give that a real good bond and stick those parts together. Why are you stuff? Do you know what? I love these, but I put the pin in and sometimes it just stops squirting. There we go. Having a moment. We've all been having those lately. Perhaps it needs air. Okay, so take your time with this bit because obviously that bit needs to be stuck flat. Make sure you've got the same width at the top and the bottom. Once you're happy, stick those edge bits down first by running your finger and then go in between each one of those little grooves and give that a real good push down. Okay, so the last bit you need to stick then is just these two flaps, which will stick on these parts. And then obviously we're going to mat and layer over the top of them so you won't be able to see the joins. So just lifting that up and now. Probably should have done this at the same time in all honesty. It's been a while since I've done this, so I decided to do it live on <laughs> live on you camera, YouTube. 
That's annoying me now. And this one's nearly empty. Oh, the joy. There we go. So again, lots of glue. Really take care inside that spine bin. Just be careful how much you put on the outside bit. Obviously, it's been covered up, so it's not that much of a problem. And there. And same on the other side. stick there so there we go and there we have our basis of our journal now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take folded pages now if you've got any um uh, digital kit journals obviously if you you print them off and they sometimes come like this don't they so you've got one picture on one side one on the other side i've obviously trimmed the white bit off the edge folded them in half and they should all measure the same size next tip i'm going to give you is on here i'm going to go along and just snip from the base like that a tiny little notch now the reason i'm doing that is because when you come to stick these pages down it might just a corner so obviously um it just makes it easy to stick and it gives you a bit of wiggle room for the size of your pages as well so just go on all of those snipping up like so and then the last thing we're going to do today in our journal is we're just going to bring these pages in now, some of these I am going to stick together first. Some of them I'm going to leave because if you glue uh, these together, you can't have a pocket. If you just glue down the sides, obviously you can then have this as a pocket. So the first image I wanted was this gorgeous bee image. Okay, so bringing in our paper here. I'm not sure if we can just come down to this angle as I see it. Okay, so we've got our flap here and we've got our page open like this so what you're doing is you're sitting that onto the front and the back okay so this little tab goes in the middle of your pages okay and we glue it together shut around it okay so on this one um i'm going to glue this together first because i don't want this as a pocket so i'm going to put glue all over one side and then lots of glue make sure there's no lumps like that otherwise it will show through your paper okay and on the other side i'm going to glue just around the edges because it should hold it should be fine and then as extra security i'm going to come back in with our um tacky glue and just do where it is going to meet either side where it sticks to back up again so i've covered that all in glue but this bit here i'm just going to run a bead of glue down there and a bead of glue on the other side okay so hopefully now i'm going to bring this and shut most of this up first okay and then bring our journal back over line that page up And then stick that top and bottom. There so there we have our first page. I'm just going to give that a little bit of time to stick. It's not quite sticking. And there we go. So it's our first page in our journal. And then I'm going to go along with all the rest of these. So again, I'm now going to take my next image, which I want to be this one. Um, this one I'm going to have as a pocket, it's just so I can show you what to do. Okay, so this time I want my pocket at the top. 
So I'm only going to put glue down this side here and this side here. OK, so that will create a kind of like big top pocket for us to put some wonderful goodies inside. So bead of glue down here. And then I'm going to go all the way along the bottom. And then again down this side because this goes on the other side of the black piece of card. So you do need to glue both sides. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that one down and out of the way. I'm going to come on to our next black piece. Now, you're making sure that our pocket is at the top, our pictures are all the same way. Okay, so I'm going to come in this side first and then bring that down to there. So once I'm happy with that, this is a fiddly bit, and then just bring that along. And just go along, really holding that down, take it your time, that glue is stuck. So I'm just running my fingers down this part to make sure the bottom pocket is stuck and it's stuck to my spine. There we go. That's our second page. Let me just come out a little bit. So first page, and that's obviously just as it is. Second page, now when we turn it, it's got that lovely pocket inside. Just obviously keep going back and making sure these ends have stuck. I'm obviously going a bit quick because I'm trying to show you what to do. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest off camera. I'm just going to stick the rest of these four pages on doing exactly the same method. So fold it in half. I think I'm going to have um, non-pocket, pocket, non-pocket, pocket, non-pocket, pocket, non pocket, pocket. Okay, so I've got six pages, three with pockets, three without pockets. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll come back and show you where we're up to. So there we have it. Our accordion fold. I don't know if it is an accordion fold. I can't remember what this is actually called. Please tell me if you know in the um, comments. Um, concertina, concertina fold spine, not the other one. Okay, so as it is now, this now measures uh, seven and three quarters down by five and three quarters across. And then if we go into side, we've got those beautiful, beautiful images, and every other one has got that lovely big tuck spot. And I cut one of those big tags out. And that fits perfectly inside there. Okay, and I'm going to cut that out and do some um, sewing around there. Yeah, so those tags fit brilliantly. And then we had one without a pocket. And the next one with a pocket. Without a pocket. And then finally with a pocket. And then we've got our back cover. So I'm going to leave that there today because I think that's taken up quite a bit of um, video time. So my next video will be coming back to this, decorating the front cover, obviously the spine, the back cover, the inside cover, and then making some tags and embellishments to go inside here. Um, I'm not sure at the minute whether I actually want to cover these pages. I think actually having journal tags, I might put some, you know, we make those... Um, hidden paper clips things like that are perfect for this kind of thing because you don't want to cover up why would you want to put anything over that gorgeous image okay so obviously things like this i might um, put pockets and things onto there a belly band or something but these main images i'm going to not cover up i'm going to use um these great big tags and on the plain pages i might put some belly bands and some um pockets on those so there we go so hopefully you'll join me for part two when we decorate and continue with our bee journal so if you're interested in bee journals and how to make one and obviously think about using this lovely kit again this is a honey bee junk journal kit by emily designs on etsy um i think she's still got a sale on at the moment i don't know i'll double check that and um, but i will put all the links below this video so thanks again so much for watching please remember to subscribe i am getting really close to three thousand subscribers and when i do there will be a giveaway also, if you head on over to my Instagram channel, I am a very few hundred away from 5,000 followers. And again, once I hit 5,000 followers on Instagram, I am going to be doing a giveaway. 
So keep your eyes peeled, keep liking and subscribing. See you all soon. Bye.